Hi there, I'm Mike Gales for Everlast Nutrition. And in this video, I wanna help you guys get in phenomenal shape for this summer. And so I'm gonna share with you a resistance training program that you can do in your home gym or at any real gym as the case may be. And this will be part one of three. And if you find this video useful, then be sure to check out the remaining two videos, which I will post in the next few days. As always, the purpose of this video and the entire channel for that matter is to get you into the greatest shape possible without charging you a dime. And you can check out how and why I built this home gym by clicking on the link in the description below. And when I filmed that ideas for a home gym video, it was in the dead of winter, but now the spring is here and soon the summer beach bum weather is going to be upon us. And if you want to look and feel great this 4th of July weekend, then you need to start now and not a week before. The last time that you guys saw me, I posted a video on the truth about getting six pack abs. And since then I've been eating like an absolute glutton and not working out at all as I just had a kid and my main boxing sparring partner was off for a month as well. Point being that I quickly jumped from 200 to 210 pounds, which is right over my 10 pound window. And just please note that I gained that extra weight by eating more calories, which I ate a ton, and by doing pretty much zero physical activity. And I kind of purposely did that to show you guys that yes, I gained weight due to the math of eating more and burning less calories. And now I'm gonna reverse that in a month by simply eating less and burning more calories with this type of workout. Now maybe some of you guys know how to train effectively and so perhaps this video isn't for you. And I thank you for watching anyway. But if you're a beginner or someone who hasn't been able to see the results that you want or you don't have access to a trainer, then I'm gonna walk you through this and explain the main principles that I will use to achieve results naturally. Of course, you don't have to follow my routine exactly, but once you understand the principles that I will use, you can easily alter this routine to create your own routine based on what you like to do and what you have available and still achieve great results. First and foremost, if you're gonna train, then you should have a clear and concise goal. Mine will be to drop that 10 pounds that I just put on. And now while I do that, I want to expend energy to burn that fat. I also want to maintain my strength and my muscle mass while I'm at a caloric deficit. It's also very important that I'm in and out of that gym as quickly and efficiently as possible because right now I don't have more than an hour to spare. So I can't be wasting two to three to four hours training. And I also want to maintain my cardiovascular system and my flexibility over the next month. In the very near future, I will make some videos with very specific routines for strength and conditioning, specifically to up your boxing game. And I'll also make some videos on how to gain mass and strength as quickly as possible. But for now, we're going to focus on getting lean and mean for this summer. And for the most part, I'm going to focus on maintaining the muscle mass that I already have while cutting about 300 calories a day out of my normal diet. I always love it when people tell me that they know a secret where they can gain significant amount of muscle while being at a caloric deficit at the same time and they can get ripped. So what you're telling me is that many main scientists in the world can't figure it out, but your buddy at the gym can cure all the malnutrition in Africa and South America or the world for that matter, by gaining muscle mass without an increase in caloric consumption. Wow, he's such a smart guy. If only he would share that wisdom with the rest of the world and not keep it a secret. So I don't know how he does it, but I won't be gaining any new muscle while I'm dieting and at a caloric deficit, but I will try to maintain what muscle I have. If you have watched any of my videos, then I always like to walk the walk instead of simply talking and telling you about some ambiguous routine that I never do myself. And so as always with full transparency, I will show you exactly what I will do over the next month to drop this weight. And I'm gonna show you the exact resistance, in this case, the exact weight that I will use. And now many of you can probably go way heavier than I do, and that's great. And if you can't go as heavy, then that's all good as well. My whole goal by showing you the weights that I lift is to give you a clear idea of the intensity level, not the weight, but the intensity level that I will need to achieve my goal. Now this brings me to another fundamental principle. And if you watch that six pack abs video, then I mentioned that thermodynamics was the main principle behind every diet. And when it comes to sculpting muscle, it is the intensity that is the overall sculptor of your body. You need to steer your body via the intensity of your resistance to achieve the desired result. So you're gonna need to push yourself to force your body to adapt to the stress that you will impose on it. I mention this because this is probably the biggest mistake that most people make. And that's why you see some guys that go to the gym for six years and he looks the exact same way as he did when he first walked through the door. They're not training with the right intensity level to achieve the goal that they want to achieve. Next, to save that precious time I was talking about, we will use compound sets, which are two different exercises for the same muscle group. 
and supersets, which are two different exercises for opposing muscle groups. But don't worry, you're gonna see exactly how I'm gonna do this. And as we go along, I'm gonna point out some guiding principles that you can use to tailor this routine to both which exercises you like to do and what equipment you have access to. I'm gonna devise a schedule which will have me resistance training three days a week and doing two days of more intense cardiovascular work. And so my schedule is gonna look like this. On Monday, I'm gonna do routine one, which is this video, chest and back. On Tuesday, I'm gonna do that home gym boxing routine and I'll leave a link below. Or I might head to the city and do 10 rounds of sparring. On Wednesday, I'm gonna do routine two, which will be arms. And Thursday, once again, I'm gonna go spar or I'm gonna do that home gym boxing routine. On Friday, I'm gonna do routine three, which will be legs and shoulders. And then I'm gonna take the whole weekend off and enjoy myself. So I'm gonna be training from Monday to Friday and each workout's gonna be about an hour, give or take 15 minutes. So instead of spending two, three, four hours per training session, like some people do, my whole entire week of training will only be about five hours. So for those that say that they don't have the time, well, mm, did you watch two movies this week and a little bit of TV? And if you've done that, well then you definitely have the time. You just need to make your health a priority. Finally, I'm gonna do a detailed video all about my diet, but for now, all you need to know is that I'm gonna stop eating all of the junk and all of the pasta and extra food that I've been eating, which was easily an extra five to 800 calories per day. And I'm gonna cut 300 calories a day out of my usual diet. And between that and this exercise routine, I should drop about seven pounds of pure fat over the next month, along with maybe two to three pounds of residual food that is bloating me right now. And that should bring me back down to around the 200 pound marker or so within a month. I know I talk a lot sometimes, and these are sometimes longer videos, but I always want everyone to understand why I do certain things so that the principles of weight loss can stick with them. And if spending a half hour watching these videos gets you the great results that have always been elusive to you, well, then it was well worth my time. And so here we go. Once again, I'm filming these videos in that home gym that I made. And even though it's now April, it's still a bit chilly when I train first thing in the morning, maybe about four or five degrees. And so once again, here I go with the ugly layered outfit to stay warm. And when we're speaking of staying warm, let's warm up. I'm getting a little older and I can't overemphasize how important it is for me to warm up, especially since it's still cold in here. I don't wanna risk straining any muscles in my routine. Now you can choose any type of warm up that you like, but for this day one routine of chest and back, I'm gonna warm up using the double ended bag and I'll leave a link on how to use that below. I will quickly wrap my hands to stay safe and I'm going to increase the intensity of this warm up by grasping one pound weights under the thumb and hook loop it's only a one pound weight, but it will add to the intensity of this warm up. I'm gonna use a timer on my smartphone and do three rounds with a 30 second break in between each round. But you can take a full minute if you like, or you can do the 10 minutes straight depending on what shape you're in. So round one, the first round, I'm gonna throw non-stop straight punches. And I'm looking to keep my shoulders up nice and high as I continually keep my hands moving. Round two, I'm gonna rinse and repeat the last round with non-stop punching. The only difference is that this round, I'm gonna throw some light hooks. Now notice that I'm not trying to kill the bag. I'm just using my core muscles to continuously throw the punches and just keep making contact with the bag. Round three, I'm gonna double up that jab and then throw a cross, nonstop for the whole three minutes. Not only am I warming up my entire body, but I'm also loosening up the muscles in my upper body that I'm about to train in this resistance training exercise session. And so after that 10 minutes, I'm gonna quickly put down the gloves and take off the wraps. And I'm gonna start the resistance training portion of this routine with a mass building multi-joint exercise. And the fundamental principle that I will use is that I will do the exercise that is the most intense first. And that's the one that usually, not always, but usually uses the most amount of weight. And for my chest today, that's gonna to be the flat bench press. And I'm gonna warm up with a weight that I think that I can do for about 15 repetitions. Now I've been off for a while and so I'm gonna try two plates, which is 225 pounds. And for me, I'm looking to bring the bar all the way down to my chest and press it all the way back up. Now I thought that I would do 15, but I was actually able to pull off 20. And so, hmm, not a bad start. And I'm gonna do a compound set here to really push my chest. 
And so without resting, I get up off of the bench and I head over to those furniture lifting straps that I mentioned in the how to build a gym video. They're super cheap and they're super effective. I use my core muscles to keep my body stable as I go as deep as comfortably possible and then press out. And I'm looking to do 10 reps here. And you may be asking yourself, why the hell is this guy doing a compound set? Well, the answer is that I'm looking to push myself a little bit, but I'm all alone. And these compound sets will roughly have the same effect as if I had a spotter who was there to help me push out a couple of extra reps. I'm just looking to add to the intensity of my initial mass building exercise and training all by my lonesome these compound sets are a good way to do that. Once in a while, instead of using the furniture straps, I might compound the flat bench press with the Chuck Norris machine that I mentioned in the home gym video. But you use whatever you have. That could be as simple as doing some push-ups if you don't have access to any equipment. The bottom line is that you're just looking to add a little intensity by compounding an easier exercise onto the sets of my flat bench press. Remember that I also wanna maximize my time. And when most people are resting, I'm gonna keep working. So while my chest is resting after my set, I'm gonna hit the floor and work my neck. The muscles of the neck are so often overlooked by most people, but they're just as important as the rest of your muscles. And if you participate in any sort of contact sport, then they are extremely important and you really should not ignore your neck. I'm going to use a neck harness with 50 pounds and do 50 reps of a type of neck extension, which will take about a minute. A little note here, the movement that I'm using is not a strict neck extension, as I'm always a little cautious of impingement issues when using weights for my neck, but it's more of a stabilization exercise with only some neck extension with some movement from my upper back that incorporates the trapezius as well as the posterior muscles of the neck. So you will see here that my neck moves a bit, but you will also see movement from my upper back as opposed to this movement, which is a strict motion where there is no movement from my upper back. It's a strict yes motion using only the muscles of my neck. I also use a foam roller to give me a little more clearance off the floor. This position also keeps a bit of tension on the muscles of my chest as I have to hold myself up. As soon as I'm done, I stand up and I stretch the muscles of my chest. So the right side for 30 seconds, followed by the left side for 30 seconds. So in total, I've rested about two minutes and I'm right back to the bench press where now I'm gonna do three working sets. And what I mean by working sets is that I'm now going to increase the intensity by upping the weight from 225 to 275, or some weight that you think that you can do for about eight to 10 repetitions. So I'm aiming for eight repetitions with 275, but I was able to cheat a little bit by lifting my butt off of the bench and squeeze out nine. Now that's a little quick note. I've been training for a very long time. And as you will see, I do use some cheat sets to increase the amount of weight that I can lift for certain exercises. And if you're new to training, then you may want to stick with strict form to reduce the chance of injury. So once in a while, I do cheat by lifting my butt. So after I'm done that set, I go back to 10 reps of the furniture lifting straps, followed by the neck exercises and the stretching for three rounds. Now, this is something that I want to show you that most trainers or most other people on YouTube won't. I'm not afraid to fail. And so this is a shot of my third and final set where Notice that I use the safety bar so that I can stay safe and slip out. And people may be thinking, ha ha ha, what a loser. He couldn't do it. He only did six reps at the end. But failing here isn't losing. In fact, it's gaining and winning. And this is where most people fall short. They never really push themselves to this point. You see, if I was still easily able to do those eight reps without putting in any real effort, then it wasn't intense enough and it was too light. And you need to know this because if your body finds it easy, it says to itself, hey, I got this covered and I don't need to maintain or gain new muscle. And so it won't. But right now I'm forcing my body to realize that holy crap, we need all the muscle that we have to be able to survive. So I'm gonna hang on to all this muscle for your dear life, even if I'm dieting. And that's what I'm going for. So yes, I failed and that's all good, I'm human. But I'm a human who's natural and I want my body to adapt to the intensity of my training. After I have finished my total of four sets of the flat bench press, that's one warm-up set and three working sets, I'm going to focus on the muscles at the center of my back with some bent over barbell rows. And just like we did for the flat bench press, I'm gonna warm up with a weight that I can pull for 15 to 20 repetitions. Note here that I keep my torso a little higher. It's not a strict bent over row where my torso is parallel to the ground, putting the focus on my rhomboids. But instead, I keep my torso at about a 45 degree angle which is going to help engage my traps as well. 
If you find the barbell uncomfortable, then you can always opt to use dumbbells instead, but the same principle will apply. I'm keeping my torso at about 45 degrees to the ground and pulling the dumbbells up to my outer chest. And just like before, I'm going to compound the barbell row and jump right away back to the furniture lifting straps for some more rows using my body weight. Remember that I'm looking to up the intensity on the muscles at the center of my back. And I'm going to shoot for 10 repetitions here. Nothing too crazy. If you don't have the straps, then you could do a compound set and use the resistance bands to help give you that little push. Once in a while, instead of the furniture straps, I might use that Chuck Norris machine for 10 reps of seated rows. Or if you happen to be in an actual gym, then you could just jump on a row machine. And just like before, during my rest period, I'm going to continue to work my neck. This time with no weight and on the exercise ball, where I will now use a strict motion of neck flexion for 20 reps. And then I'll do some rotation where I'll look to the left and then the right for 20 reps. And I'll finish with 10 circles to the left and then 10 circles to the right. After that, I'm gonna hop up and spend 45 seconds stretching my lower back and hamstrings on the exercise ball. Just like we did for the bench press, we're gonna do three working sets of this mass builder. And I'm gonna throw on some straps and aim for eight to 10 repetitions. And then compound that with the furniture straps for 10 pulls. And then while at rest, I will do the neck exercises and 45 seconds of stretching. After that, we're gonna start supersetting. Now remember that a superset is two exercises in succession of opposing muscle groups. So I'm gonna start with the seated incline dumbbell press. And you could do the same thing with the barbell in the rack if you like, but I'm gonna use the dumbbells to add variety. Now my main goal here is that eight to 10 repetition range. A problem for me is that these 70 pound dumbbells feel a bit light. And so to increase the intensity, I'm going to increase the angle and open up with a bit wider motion on the eccentric phase, the way down towards my chest. So you can almost think of it as a negative fly motion on the way down. Then I bring the weights back into my outer chest and press up. And remember, I'm aiming for eight to 10 reps. As soon as I'm done, I head back to the rack for eight to 10 reps of some wide grip pull-ups where I target my lats. I let my body drop all the way down and then I pull myself right back up. And once again, I keep saying it, but I'm aiming here for eight to 10 reps. If you don't have access to a place to pull up or you're having trouble doing them, then you could try the Chuck Norris machine if you have it, or a lat pull down machine if you're in a gym. Or you can also use the resistance bands if you have them. You can shorten up the band by passing it a couple of times around your anchor point, and then go down on your knees and do the lat pulls from there as you keep your back almost perpendicular to the floor. While I rest, I'm gonna to return to a stabilization exercise for my neck using the ball. Now this may be a little more advanced for some of you, so be cautious if you try it but I'm going to lean toward the ball and hold as much of my body weight as possible for 45 seconds. And you could do the same thing from your knees if it's a little bit too tough. But just be careful if you try this because you don't want to strain your neck or roll off the ball. And then I'm going to spend the next 45 seconds stretching out my lower back on the exercise ball. And I'll do two more rounds of this superset. Finally, I'm going to do one more round of a superset where I will start with the furniture lifting straps to perform some flies. My main focus here will be to focus on a fly motion, not a pressing motion on the eccentric phase the way down. And I'm looking to open up as far as I can as comfortably possible. Now, if you don't have those furniture lifting straps, then you can use some dumbbells on the incline bench and use a weight that sees your intensity level at about eight to 10 repetitions. From there, without resting, I'm gonna head right back to the rack, throw on some straps and do some shrugs. And I'll use three plates for eight to 10 reps. Now you could compound that with the resistance bands to really burn those traps. And if you only have resistance bands, then you could focus on some upright rows to burn those traps. As soon as I'm done the shrugs, I'm gonna lay down the bar. And again, I don't waste time. I bring over a bench and I do 15 reps of some lower back hyperextensions. Once I've done 15, then I immediately flip over and I do 15 reps of sit-ups using the same setup. Finally, I finish off my day one resistance training routine with 15 minutes of intense cardio. So I might hit the treadmill and run two miles, or I might jump rope for 15 minutes. My goal is that I want the intensity level to be high enough to tax my cardio system, but I really don't want to do more than 20 minutes of cardio at the end here, because I've already put in 45 minutes of hard work and I don't want to burn any muscle tissue. My goal, remember, was to maintain it. 
So I would recommend 15 to 20 minutes of cardio at the absolute max. Now, if you made it this far into the video, then you're starting to see the principles that I use to make this routine. I warm up for 10 minutes, then I choose three exercises for each muscle group, one of which is a multi-joint mass builder where I can use some heavier weight, and I will do that exercise first. I will compound that exercise with a very similar exercise but with less resistance, like the bench press followed by the straps, for example. During my minute and a half to two minutes of rest, I don't rest. I work smaller muscles, like today where I work my neck, and then I stretch for 45 seconds to a minute, and then jump right to the next set. I will do a warm up set for the first exercise of that muscle group for 15 to 20 repetitions, followed by three working sets of eight to 10 repetitions. And remember, if I can't complete my goal of eight reps, then it's all good, it means that I'm working hard. As long as I can still do at least five reps, then I'm doing okay. Because remember, you wanna push yourself. Next, I do another mass building round with a multi-joint exercise for the opposing muscle group. In today's case, we did the rows for my back, where I also compounded that exercise. And again, I did a warm-up set for about 15 reps, followed by three working sets of eight to 10 reps each. After those two heavy rounds are done, I switched to two rounds of supersets, which remember was two back-to-back -back exercises of opposing muscle groups. And as always, I was aiming for eight to 10 reps for each exercise. Then again, during the rest periods, I used that time to continue working my neck and to continue stretching. I finished off my routine with 15 minutes of cardio work at the end with a high enough pace to tax my cardio system but I wouldn't push myself for more than 20 minutes at the maximum. This whole routine should take me just about an hour, give or take 15 minutes. And obviously you don't need to use the same weights that I used. Maybe you'll go heavier or maybe you'll go lighter. The whole point is to simply give you some ideas that you can use and to stress the fact that you need to be working with enough intensity, which means you need to be working hard enough to get the desired response from your body. So parts two and three will be posted in a few days. And until then, I hope that if you like this video, you'll also give it a thumbs up. I thank you. And once again, this has been Mike Gales for Everlast Nutrition. And if you like these videos, then please click below to like or subscribe as we're constantly posting great tips and new ideas that are meant to get you into the greatest shape possible.